us this uh, Lord's Day morning. Beautiful day outside, uh, crisp and cold. Makes you want to have a nice cup of coffee and sit out and uh, listen to the birds fly by and sing and such. Uh, spring is right around the corner, but until we get there, let's just rejoice in all that the Lord has for us. Thank you for your prayers. We made it to uh, Edmonton on Wednesday, made it to uh, Pigeon Lake on uh, Thursday, Friday, and we came home last night. And we do appreciate your prayers. We had safety all the way and had a great uh, blessing with the young people. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you, dear Lord, for the day and the blessings of it. We ask that thy Holy Spirit uh, would have his way in our hearts and our lives today. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the folks that are here and those that have joined us online. And Lord, we come to worship you today for you are worthy of all praise and adoration that we can uh, bring within our hearts and within our lives because we love you and we thank you so much for all your love for each and every one of us. Lord, as we meet together in Jesus' name, we thank you that as we're two or three are gathered together that you're in our midst and we thank you for meeting with us today. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've done this past week. We look with a great anticipation in the week ahead of us. We ask, dear Father, that thy Holy Spirit uh, would bring conviction into our hearts and to our lives Help us, dear Lord, to follow you in all things. We do pray for those that are lost, that need Christ as their Savior. There's a lot of moms and a lot of dads, a lot of children uh, that need to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Some of them are our relatives. Some are our friends and co-workers, some of our neighbors. Lord, I just pray, Father, that you'd help us to realize eternity is real and it is long. And it's not very far away for us that Jesus is coming soon. Lord, may we be found faithful unto the coming of our Lord. Be with our missionaries this morning. Bless them as they have already have ministered all around the world. And we just thank you for each one from Australia to South Africa to Germany and Lord across Canada. And Lord, the gospel have gone forth and we're just so thankful that we have a small part in a great big ministry of our God. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. And the people said... Amen and praise the Lord. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Brother Sam. If you'd all stand with me as we turn to number 489 for our first song, Glory to His Name, number 489. Down up across where I stand.
you may be seated as we turn a few pages back to number 469. I found a friend at number 469. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me just give you a couple of announcements. Then the young people are going to give their testimonies. And uh, we're going to give testimony as to the uh, uh, chill out. We had a great time. And uh, we'll have the young people come up here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, let me just make a couple of announcements right after the service. Those that are able to uh, stay for a bite of lunch. We are brown bagging it. We always have a little bit extra uh, for folks. And you're more than welcome to stay. One o'clock, we'll be having our service. And uh, then after that, uh, we'll be having a little choir practice, and then uh, we'll be dismissed and out of here by 3 o'clock. Next week, if you come here, we won't be here, but there'll be a lot of cadets. Uh, <laughs> there'll be a place to be packed and running over with all kinds of uh, sea cadets, army cadets, air cadets. Uh, this is one of the few places across Canada uh, that, where they have their own building uh, with each and every uh, cadet uh, having a place to have their things. And so next week is their big thing. And uh, so, But we will be at the Elks Lodge on Douglas. Uh, if you turn there on Douglas off of uh, Fifth Avenue, uh, you'll find us there. As a matter of fact, the, uh, uh, the address there is 663 Douglas. And uh, we'll be there at 1030. We'll actually be setting up at about 8 or, or, or 9 o'clock. We will be having a potluck, and so if you'd like to sign up to bring something for the potluck, after the potluck, instead of uh, afternoon service, we will be having our annual business meeting. And so that'll be next uh, Sunday. We'll not have an afternoon service. It'll be our annual business meeting. So everybody's encouraged to come. There's a lot more room at the Elks uh, Hall than there is here, uh, so there'll be plenty of room to eat, uh, sit. Uh, we'll have to set up tables to eat, and then afterward we'll have our our uh, general business meeting, and everybody's invited for that. And uh, But uh, uh, that'll be at the Elks, and so we want to encourage uh, each and everyone to join us next week. If, like I say, if you come here, I'm sorry, we won't be here, uh, but uh, we sure would like to have you at the Elks Hall. And then the following Sunday, we're here again. That's the first Sunday of March. And then the second Sunday of March, we're not here. And uh, so we'll be back at the Elks. Uh, we have them for two Sundays, and uh, we'll uh, be at uh, here uh, the rest of the time. So anyway, uh, do remember that, if you would, please, uh, next week. Now, if you're able to help us on Saturday, we're going to be uh, having to make some arrangement because our uh, administration office is closing down, and uh, we need some help uh, making sure we've got some areas cleaned up. 
and straighten up around the building so that we can uh, have moving day on Monday, Tuesday, and uh, have to move everything out of the administration office. And so uh, we want to make sure that uh, we can move it into our building uh, and not have to pay for rental uh, of a storage space. Uh, but it, And again, I mentioned last week we have a desk if somebody's interested in a desk, uh, but um, we'll find out what we have and uh, going to be do going through that and cleaning that up uh, pretty much as well. And so uh, uh, if you're able to come and help us with that, especially moving day, I will mention uh, last week that uh, we mentioned about Irene uh, Redlon. She did pass away, graduated to glory, and uh, the family contacted me. And so the uh, funeral for uh, Irene will be March 1st. That's a Friday. And it will be at Aspen Funeral Home at 1 o'clock. And we'll have more detail in it next week for you. And uh, I'm trying to find out whether or not we need our ladies to uh, make some food and to, to take some food by uh, for the family that uh, folks will be coming in from out of town and such. Um, I'll get more detail uh, on that. I didn't get a phone call from the family till Tuesday night. Of course, we left town on early Wednesday morning. And so uh, uh, do uh, continue to pray for their family. All right, young people, come right up. And workers that uh, went to camp, guys that are in the foyer there, all right, come right ahead. And... Uh, we're going to start off with Mrs. Hallmark, and then we'll get the workers out of the way, and uh, then we'll let the young people come right in. Larkin, there's a spot right up here for you up over here. Come right up here. we got some empty seats this way. Ms. Hallmark, you come right ahead. And then after Ms. Hallmark, Leah will give a word, quick word, testimony, and uh, all right. Hey. Well, we had a great retreat, the youth camp there for those two nights and a couple of days. And uh, the preaching was really good. Brother Brian Rice from Edmonton, from Cornerstone Baptist Church. So it was uh, really good preaching for all, everybody, not just teens and youth. But uh, a very spiritual atmosphere and teens learning Bible verses. And uh, I was in a cabin with seven girls, about five, four or five GKs, which is preacher's kids. <laughs> Very good girls. It was great. And uh, the fun aspect, me and Pastor rode on a tube behind the quad on the lake, frozen. And they had a bonfire. I said that before anybody else could say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was fun. It was my first year coming as a worker this year, and I wasn't sure what to expect. But um, I was a counselor for a few hours while the other counselor came in. And it was an interesting experience. But then afterwards, I was in the kitchen the whole time. So unfortunately, I missed out on that quad ride. But um, it was fun. It was hard work. But I mean, it showed me that the kitchen staff do really a lot of the work. And um, I have a new appreciation for them. But um, the staff there, my other kitchen workers, they were really fun to hang out with, and they were good, um, <laughs> good to learn from. And um, some of the messages I was able to sit on um, was about honor and how honor comes before obedience and how honoring has no expiration date and how we should respect our, our, author, our authorities and show appreciation to them. And honestly, I had a great... Um, few days at camp, and it was lovely. It was another great year at camp. It was really good preaching. That's always such a blessing to go and to hear preaching specifically for teens. Just ways to, just ways that we can get closer to God in different areas we could work on. There was great friends, and just the fellowship was amazing. And thank you for letting Pastor and us go. One of the messages that I enjoyed was on Friday night. It was um, was by Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, fully acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I thought it was cool that it isn't, it isn't more, like, it isn't not expected of me to present my body. It is reasonable. I should present my body. And I was 
asking God to help me to be strong and to present my body so that I could and follow through with it. And the next morning when I was doing my devotions, it was like an answer from God. It was just going to my FBI, which is like a three-year plan. And it was in Isaiah 26, 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And I always just thank you, God, for showing me that, that I do have enough strength, that the Lord will share his strength with me, and I can be strong enough. Hello, my name is Matthew, as you guys know. Um, I just went there with an open heart because I wasn't sure what God had for me, but I knew he had something. And before we even got to camp, I was able to see an old friend, have a great time, get some advice already. Then camp and the preaching was just like, God, you gave me this wonderful message. Well, what's in it for me? God just like, Matthew, it's right here. And just the entire camp, God was showing me his love, giving me advice, and showing me his plan. And on Friday night, they had a message about surrendering and answering the call. And I know that God had been calling me for a little while now, but I was, I'm still not sure what he's calling me for or when. But you guys pray for me that I would be strong and I'd answer that call and that I would find out. And that was me. It was my second year at camp and it was overall very enjoyable. And I learned that God sees me honoring your plan and how there is no honoring without obeying his. And how you should um, care about your parents, even when they get old. <laughs> and how parents even sometimes make mistakes as they are human as well. And how we should also forgive them in all things. And it was also very enjoyable to fellowship with others who were here. And I did go on a tube ride. This was my second year at camp, and it was a very enjoyable, enjoyable experience. I also went on the tube ride and got dragged along on the snow. Um, it was very fun. <laughs> One of the messages that spoke to me was Friday morning. Um, God wants us to obey, honor our parents. One of the points that he made was realizing how much that they sacrificed to raise you and kind of like care for you and all the things that they have sacrificed and how, much, how many times have we really thanked our parents for caring for us and sacrificing all their pretty much free time and free will for us little kids. And like Instant obedience is one of the things for respect and honor. And anything other than instant obedience is not really obedience. Well, it was really fun at camp. Um, for me, I took camp in a different light this year. Um, last year, I was pretty shy. and All I did, it felt like, was memorize verses for three days and then come back home. And this year, I still memorized a lot of verses, but this year it was more about memorizing names. I spent a lot of time um, meeting a lot of young Christians and talking to them, building relationship, relationships and having fun. And it really, it kind of made that camp experience, being able to share the love of Jesus with others and being able to be that good Christian witness is what really helped me. And the first uh, message of camp really helped me with that. It was, I, well, I titled it, He's Simple. And Pastor Rice talked about the simplicity of the gospel, how Satan tries to corrupt our minds and take us away from the simplicity that is in Christ. And I always find, for me, I like to make things way too complicated, and I like to overthink all the time. But, you know, and even, like, just in this world, everything, it seems like, is getting so complicated. And just to come back to that simplicity of the gospel, to the simplicity of your morals and foundations, where you stand and how you love Jesus. Just coming there and learning and growing and strengthening my resolve for Christ, you know, reaffirming the decisions I made and just being able to share and be the light of the gospel is what really made camp, camp this year for me. Thank you.
they, uh, they had a great time. Uh, Chelan, uh, at night, they would gather around the piano. I mean, there was probably 20 young people playing musical instruments from harmonicas to guitars to violins and singing. And uh, I tell you, we, Peter was just ripping and singing and having a great time. And, and uh, uh, Leah was just in there singing. And, and boy, they were just having a wonderful time. It was a, a great, great experience uh, for camp. And uh, uh, so like we used to try to do around the piano, they, uh, uh, we get our building, we'll get around the piano again. But anyway, uh, it was just a, a real blessing uh, to be able to be with them. Uh, one of the pastors there, uh, he said, uh, Pastor Allmark, he says, he says, it's amazing. You, you're still caring for young people. And uh, he, he was a young person. I, I mean, he was a young teenager with my kids and such. And he says, you're still, you and Miss Hallmark are still working with young people, still uh, doing everything you can for them. We love your young people. We love all the young people that God has given to us. Uh, through a sphere of influence, and we are praying for you, uh, for your family. And I would say this to uh, families. When, when young people come back from a camp, uh, please understand God's been working in their heart and uh, pray that God will work in your heart to, to understand and to have a, a sensitivity uh, to what's been going on in their lives because God is greatly working uh, in the hearts of each and every one. All right, Brother Sam, come right ahead. If you'd stand, please, as we turn to number 460, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 460. <clears throat> what a fellowship, what a joy divine. Logger and Paul come right up, and uh, Amen. You'll take the top one. There you go. All right. Let's ask God's blessings upon the offering, and I'll ask Brother Charles if he would pray for us, please. Amen. God bless you as you get.
For our last song before the preaching, we'll sing number 318, I Need Thee Every Hour. Number 318. chapter number 40, if you would please, for our responsive reading this morning. Isaiah chapter 40, we'll read responsively verse uh, 12 through 18. I'll read verse 12, the congregation will read verse 13, we'll read responsibly down to verse number 18, and then afterwards uh, we'll have a special uh, from the ladies, and then after the special from the ladies, the children be dismissed, and we'll have uh, Brother Gerald come and preach for us. And uh, the Friesens have been in our church for about eight months now, just about, going on something like that, and, and we're happy to have them with us, and uh, I believe he's preached for us once before. I was out of town, but I get to have him preach for us again, and I do appreciate that after traveling all day yesterday, uh, well, most today, eight hours or so, but uh, do appreciate that so very, very much. Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, verses 12 through 18. If you found it, let's hear a hearty amen. 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 Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in a scale, and the hills in a balance? Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, for being his counselor hath taught him? With whom took he counsel? And who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and shewed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Verse 18, excuse me, verse 18 together. Amen. To whom then will we liken God? Or what likeness will he compare unto us? Amen. May God add his blessing to the word. You may be seated, and the ladies are going to come.
Neil come right in. Also, children are dismissed and the junior age kids are dismissed as well. So all those that are 12 and under uh, may be dismissed and go to class. All right, if you take your Bibles, uh, we're going to come back to Isaiah chapter 40 a little bit later, but let's start with uh, Psalm 95. Psalm 95 in your Bibles. I want to keep a question in mind this morning, and that is how great is your God. How great is your God? And if you're asking for yourself, how great is my God? And so we see in the scriptures in Psalm 95 verse 3, we have a little bit of a thought here. It says, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills, and his, his also, the sea is his, and he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Verse 3, for the Lord is a great God. He is a great God, but who is your God? How great is your God? I want us to think about that this morning. Let's pray. Father, we do ask that you would guide us in your scripture, guide us in the word this morning. May we... Take something from this that, that would help us in our life to just to see you, who you are, and what you can be for us. Pray for anyone that's struggling or has uh, big decisions to make, that, that you would help them through that. Just depend upon you. We will trust in you more because of what we learn from your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So how great is your God? You know, the greatness of your God is going to be, uh, is going to depend on how you live your life. Uh, over here it says in verse 3, he is the great king above all gods. And you might have other gods, I might have other gods that we, we trust in, that we uh, look to. Uh, people out in the world have their God. We all have a God. We all have something that we look to. Sometimes maybe it's just ourselves. And ourselves are our best God. But we have a God, but who is your God? What is my God? How great is your God? I want to look at this this morning. But let's go over to our scripture reading, Isaiah chapter 40. I want to do two things this morning. One is to look at the greatness of God. And the greatness of God explained, and then the greatness of God applied. Let's look at the greatness of God. There's a little passage here, and we could have looked at a number of different places in the Bible. But in Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse 12, we have, a, have just an amazing passage that tells us about the greatness of God. And it says, and I... I think even Pastor uh, Hallmark preached a little bit about this just a while ago. I was thinking about that, and I, I asked God, should I change my message? He says, no, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They, they can get it again. So we're going to look at uh, Isaiah 40, verse 12. The Bible says, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the Mountains and scales and the hills and a valley. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? He's talking about the waters of the world, the waters of this earth, all of them, not, not just a little bit. You know, the hollow of your hand, if you stick out your hand and you sort of make it a, as a cup, that's the hollow of your hand. I went to the kitchen the other day says, preparing, I say, I wonder how much water I can hold in my hand. I guess we're all adults here, little children might hold less than we do. But I, uh, I took it and I 
grabbed it out of the sink and I put it in a measuring cup and I, I figured out, well, I can get about 10 milliliters in my hand. About 10 milliliters in my hand. It would take me about 30 seconds if I just uh, did this. Every second, I could fill a cup. 30 seconds, not too bad. Kitchen sink, though. If I had to measure the kitchen sink and the amount of water in the kitchen sink, figured it would take about 30 minutes. A bathtub? About eight hours. I was thinking, what about a lake? How long would it take to, if I had to measure with my <laughs> measuring tool, with my hand, how long would it take to measure a lake? Uh, could I do it in my lifetime? I couldn't. I, I would have to take about 12 or 13 lifetimes. Uh, it would take over 1,000 years uh, to, to measure a large lake, a lake like one of the great lakes that we have. That's just a small body of water compared to the oceans. And God takes and he measures the water in the hollow of his hand. What about an ocean? You know, it would take you over a million years, probably a billion years, if you had to take your hand and measure the oceans with your hand. The Bible says God. God takes his hand, and with the hall of his hand, he measures out the waters. I don't think it even takes him more than a minute. I think he just... Uh, just takes it and does it a few times, and he's, he's measured. That's the greatness of God. But I'm not asking you how great God is. That's how great God is. I'm asking, how great is your God? Is your God that great? When you're going through trials, when you're going through difficulties, is he that great? Or uh, you sort of lose sight of how great he is. It says next in that passage, and meted out heaven with the span. Now the span, I've got a crooked finger here, so I better use this one. <laughs> the span is, is the length of your hand, okay, from your thumb to the end of your finger. That's the span. They used to use the span uh, to measure things. You, some people use the span to measure a horse. Uh, not too bad. Horse, maybe 20 spans, maybe 25. Uh, not too bad. You can do it fairly easily. But God says he meets the heaven with a span. He's talking about all the stars, uh, the, the stars and the length of the stars and the galaxies and, and all that. He uses the span of his hand to measure it. No, our span is about, well, my span, I measured it, and it's about 20 centimeters. If you can use your span about one, one a second, you can measure a meter. Uh, it still takes you a little while. You can measure a horse, maybe takes you 20 seconds. How long would it take you to measure across Canada? <laughs> across Canada. Okay, well, I kind of... Went through the calculation. You couldn't do it in your lifetime. You'd need more uh, lifetimes than even uh, measuring a lake. You have to take your span and measure Canada. It'll take about 2,000 years to measure Canada. What about if you had to measure to the sun? Measure to the sun with your span? 100 million years, 100 million years, God measures the heaven, not the distance between the earth and the sun, but the distance between stars, our earth to the nearest star. If you had to measure that with your span, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> it would take you over a billion years uh, to measure to stars and to galaxies billions of years to measure these distances if you had to use your span. But God, God takes his hand and he measures 
from galaxy to galaxy with the span, with the span of his hand. That's a great God. That's a great God. Goes on to say that he's pretty good at counting, too. Let's see there, uh, next part of the verse, it says, and comprehended the dust, not the sand particles, but the dust of the earth in a measure. Comprehended means he, he comprehends, understands it. He, he, he analyzes it. He knows the number of the dust of the earth. Okay, not the sand. If you go to the... <laughs> Uh, to the beach, and you look at the sand, and you pick up a, a little bit of sand, you can count out, maybe there's 200 there in, in my science class. It's part of what gave me this idea. Uh, we were doing a section in physics where they have to predict, you know, predict uh, and make approximations if, if how many sand particles on the beach, for example. Or if the whole earth were, were sand particles, how many sand particles w would there be? But, but this is not talking about sand. It's talking about dust. A little piece of dust. Dust that you can't see, but it's floating around. And, and God sees every dust particle, and he comprehends it. He understands it. He, he numbers it. You want to try... Counting the dust in this in this room <laughs> take a long time just to count the dust in this little room, and then to count the dust in Prince George, and then onward and forward. They say the Sahara Desert it blows a lot of dust, <laughs> billions of grams of dust uh, go into the ocean every year. And yet God comprehends it. He, he looks at it. He, he numbers it. He numbers them. Every millions and millions of grams, and there are millions of dust in a gram. Take us a long time to count, if we could even count. But God knows the grains of dust. And it says there that he... Uh, the next thing he does, he weighs the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. He weighs the mountains. We have these uh, we have these scales, you know, when you're driving down the highway, come to these scales. Usually if you're in a car, you don't have to stop there, but if you're in a big semi-truck, you're supposed to stop and get on the scale and because they don't want the, the trucks to be too big for the road because it could wreck the road. So how much is that, 20 tons for a truck? And so we put them on there. They weigh about 20 tons. That's our scale. So that's a pretty massive scale. It's a little bit bigger than your bathroom one. Pretty massive scale. But you take that truck and you put it against a mountain, you think, how big is a mountain? How many tons would a typical mountain be? Mount Robson, go, go by there. There's um, scales that are for trucks along that road toward Mount Robson. You get to Mount Robson, you look way up, and you, you imagine a little, little bitty truck on the bottom, and that weighs 20 tons. What does the mountain weigh? How would we weigh a mountain. How could, would we take it piece by piece, rock by rock? Uh, but God, and, you know, it doesn't say mountain. It says the mountains. To me, that sounds like he takes all the mountains in the world, and then it says also the hills. He takes all these mountains, and he can weigh them. I don't know what he uses I guess if he can weigh all the water in his hand, and if he can measure the heavens with a span, he has some kind of measuring tool to measure the massive mountains, not just Mount Robson, but Mount Everest in all its glory, all its majesty. God can measure that with his measuring tools. He knows the weight of the mountains. 
We go on, it says there, and uh, further down, about the nations in verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Small dust of the balance. In, in my high school, we have balances, and it really doesn't matter if there's a piece of dust on there because it really doesn't show up anyway. You know, we measure maybe to 0 0.001 grams. That's about as precise as, as we get in, uh, in our high school. And, in, and uh, dust doesn't really matter. A uh, few dust can fall on there, and we still uh, don't notice it. We don't register on our balance. When I went to university, dust did matter. There, there were some uh, <coughs> balances... They were actually inside an enclosed case you had to open up. It was a, a case that was mostly of glass. And you opened up the, uh, the door and you could put your sample on there. But before you put your sample, there was a little brush and you had to brush off all the pieces of dust. Because that balance would measure to like 0 0.0001 gram. And you didn't even want that little piece of dust to mess up uh, because you were measuring something really, really small. God takes all the nations, all the people in the world, not all the people in this room, Prince George or Canada, but all the people, seven billion people, now, back when Isaiah wrote this, there were fewer nations than there are today, fewer people, but I, I don't think it, it matters to God. I think God could do the same thing today. He takes all these people, and they're like that little piece of dust. I have to take this little brush and brush it off. <laughs> Point, to me, it's point zero 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 one grams, but, but to God... All the nations are that small. Why? Because he's a great God. He's a great God. And he even says in the next part, it's not just all the nations, but it's the islands as well. It says, Behold, he taketh up the islands, or the isles, which are the islands as a very little thing. He's thinking back to that piece of dust, that small piece of dust on the balance. And he's saying, it's not just the nations, but it's the islands. So take your car, go down to Vancouver, take the ferry, and uh, look at the island. Look at Van Vancouver Island. Look at it from a distance. Look at the great, <laughs> it's a huge island. But to God... A little piece of dust, small piece of dust. He just doop, <laughs> takes his little brush and brushes it off. Isaiah is saying that God is great. God measures the waters with the hall of his hand. He measures the, the, the billions and light years of the universe with the span of his hand. The islands are like these little pieces of dust to him. He measures the mountains. There's no doubt in my mind what Isaiah thought of God and the greatness of God. But I'm not asking you what did Isaiah think. If, if I, I'm not asking Isaiah, okay, who, who is your God? I'm asking Myself, I'm asking us in the room, how great is your God? How great is your God? If we go over there to verse number 26, it says, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who has created these things that bringeth out all their host by number? 
He's talking about the stars. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, and not one of them faileth. Later on in verse 28, he, we're going to look at that, but he talks about uh, his, his creative ability, but his strength. He takes all the stars. Verse 26, he calls the host, and he knows the host by number, but not only does he know them by number, and you've probably heard this before, and it probably struck you, uh, he knows the names of the stars. Do you know how many stars there are? In, in our galaxy, alone there are a billion stars. And there could be a, a billion galaxies with a billion stars in them. How many names do you know? Where's Peter? How many names? <laughs> how many names did you learn this weekend? 25. Impressive, 25. How many names do you know? Some of you probably know fewer names now that you're older, but, but as, as you're younger, you, you get these names. Do you think you know a 1,000? That'd be pretty impressive. There's always some, some people. Uh, John Diefenbaker, they said he knew a whole bunch of names. He could meet you uh, one, one day at, at some kind of a press meeting or, or some kind of an event, and three years later, he, he could come and look at you and he'd know your name. There are people like that. God's like that. He knows your name, but he knows the names of the stars. There, there are seven billion people in this world, and he knows their names, but he also knows the names of the stars. He calls them all by name. He cares for the stars. They, they go in, in complete unison. They, they never run into each other. They're, they're always in perfect harmony in our universe, and he calls them all by name. The tr trillions and upon trillions of stars, and he knows them by name. God is great. God is great. But how great is my God? How great is your God? We looked at the greatness of God explained, but what about the greatness of God applied? The greatness of God applied. In, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13. Now, inside this, uh, Isaiah mentions some things that apply to our life. The one thing he says there is, who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord? Now, the answer is that God has. God is saying, I, I'm the one who, who, who is this great God. I'm the one that uh, holds uh, things in his hand. I'm the one who can measure things with the hollow, the water with the hollow of my hand and meet out the heavens with the spans. And, but I also can direct the Spirit of God. I can direct the Spirit of God to those that I want them to have the Spirit, to those that need the Spirit. You know, the, the Spirit, well, let's go to John 14. Uh, John speaks about the Spirit, and he, he gives us some information that will be helpful to us about the Spirit of God in John chapter 14. And verse 16, and he's talking to his disciples and he says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he will abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. There's the spirit. The spirit of truth, the spirit of God, is called the comforter. And even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, this is not for the world. He doesn't uh, give the spirit to the world, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. For those that are believers, and uh, later on after Jesus died on the cross and, and rose again, and he went up to heaven, 
He sent the comfort, comforter. He sent the spirit down. He sent it down on Acts chapter 2, sometimes called the day of Pentecost, but he sent the comforter down, and not only did the comforter abide with them, it says he will abide in you. God directs the Spirit of God, the Comforter. When you believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, he comes and he directs the Holy Spirit of God to you, to live in you. The Spirit of God is God. The Spirit of God is God. We, you know, we all know it on paper, we know the Sunday school answer. If, if somebody were to ask you, is, you know, who is God? You say, well, he's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Ghost. That is God. But this God, this great God, lives in you as a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, he doesn't live in you. You can have the Holy Spirit. You can have God in your life. But as a believer, he lives in you. The same God that, that takes the islands and it's just a little piece of dust that he flicks. That God lives in you. That God is a comforter. And there's no situation that you will go through that God can't send a comfort to you. you say, well, you don't understand my situation. Well, maybe you don't understand God. The hall of his hand, his span, the ability to weigh the mountains. Couldn't this God send the Spirit to give you comfort? Yeah, but I have cancer. Yeah, but you know, my son has cancer. But I, I lost my job. Who is your God? How great is your God? I'm not asking how great is God. I'm asking how great is your God? Is he great enough to comfort you in every situation? Is he great enough that he, he sends that spirit within you and the spirit can comfort you wherever and whenever you're at any situation? He can be that God for you. You can trust him. You just need to just say, okay, God, <laughs> show me yourself. Show me how great you are. I want you to be the great God in my life. I don't want a little God anymore. I want you in my life to be the great God that can comfort me in every situation. So the great God directs his spirit to be our comfort. It says also in Isaiah, in that uh, same verse, and then in, in the next one, that God directs his son to be our counselor. Now, I'll show you this as we go through this. Verse number 13, Isaiah 40, verse 13, says, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel? And who instructed him? and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him in knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. Who taught all that to God? This great God that we're talking about. What he's saying, and he's saying, he's, he's, he's making a point, he's, he's giving us a truth in a form of a question, and he's saying, who gives us all this counsel? And obviously, it's this great God. The great God that we were just talking about. He gives counsel. He gives understanding. He gives us wisdom. We, if we, you may maybe know the verses in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We, we often say them during Christmas time. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Jesus Christ is that counselor. 
God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, he sends his Son into our life when we're saved to be our counselor, to be our guide, to be our help. And he's a great God. <laughs> he's a God that can make all the stars. Not only does he meet the trillions upon trillions of stars, and by the way, our sun is just a medium. Little body of glowing, hot, fiery gas compared to some of the stars. If our sun was the size of a marble, some stars would be the size of this room. That's how big it is. In our universe, our, our universe, uh, if, if this piece of paper was, was the distance between our sun and the nearest star, that, that piece of paper just right there, the distance between our sun and the nearest star, and there, our nearest star isn't a big star either. Do you know how far the galaxy reaches with all its stars? You say, well, uh, probably to the end of the wall. Uh, no. How about to Walmart? Uh, a little farther. To Vancouver? Keep going. To the moon? A little farther than that. You mean to the sun? No. Go another six times and that's our galaxy. That's the distance between our sun and the nearest star, which is four light years away. Traveling the speed of light, it'd still take you four years to get there. And our galaxy is huge with all its stars. That God that created those stars, he says, I'm your counsel. And I gave those stars a name. And I remember the, their name, and I put them in motion, and I put them in perfect motion, in unison, and I, I know all the physics and all the laws of need, that I put into the earth and all the forces that I needed to put them in, in their per perfect path. That's the greatness of our God, but our God, applied, gives us counsel. His son is called the Counselor. It doesn't matter what I'm going through, what decision I have to make, uh, the kind of wisdom I need. That's a great God. Amen. He can give me the answer to my questions. And sometimes if he doesn't give me the answer to the questions, that's just, it's not because he doesn't know it. <laughs> just, he just doesn't want me to know yet. I don't need to know some things. And that's okay sometimes as well. God is our counselor. He's our comforter through the Spirit. He sends the Spirit as our comforter to care for us and guide. And then he's our counselor uh, to, to give us counsel, to give us understanding, to give us direction. And then he's our strength. He's our strength. Verse 26, Isaiah 40, verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things? That bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. You could put that in big capital letters. Greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power. Not one faileth. Nope. When we say he is strong in power, the English language, any language, just can't give worth to what that means. Strong in power? To make a universe where that's the distance between our sun and the nearest star and the rest of the galaxy goes as far as the sun and reaches even beyond. And all of that, gal all of, sorry, not the galaxy, the universe, 
and the universe with all its stars, and God calls them by name? Wouldn't that take power? I didn't calculate the power. <laughs> I don't know if I have, we have numbers big enough to calculate the power of all the stars put together. I don't think we'd understand what that number meant. I'm not sure that we even understand what it means in Isaiah when he says he is strong in power. But I do know that my God is usually smaller than this God. Way smaller. So I have a hard time even getting up in the morning. <laughs> Thank God. I don't have strength for today. God says, I do. I can give it to you. Just trust in me. Just trust in me. Then he says in verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. And he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. And you know the rest of the passage we to wait upon the Lord, and God gives us strength. But he says he gives strength, and, and that power <laughs> is the same power that he used to create the universe, the same power that he used to weigh out the mountains and to just flick those islands aside. If you read Revelations, that's what he's going to do. Bible says every mountain and every island will be removed when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, just before he comes, he is going to just flick them away and Jesus will come in the clouds of glory. Riding a white horse, I'm saying he's a God of understanding. He's a God of power. He's a God of wisdom. He's a God of counsel. He's a God of comfort. <coughs> great comfort. Great power. Great understanding. Unsearchable. But who is your God? Who is your God? If you're like me, I lose sight of this. I remember a message, the only, one of the only messages I ever learned <laughs> when I was uh, about Mark's age. <laughs> a message like this. But I lose sight of it real quick. I, I look down just as Peter did. He looked down instead of looking up. And the Bible does say, lift up your eyes, verse 26. Lift up your eyes. Look to this God when you need comfort. Look to this God when you need wisdom. Look to this God when you un need understanding. He is there to help. You just need to re remember who God is. He can do it. Just trust in him. So who is your God? Who is your God? If you're like me, maybe you need to change that a little bit. Maybe you need to realize how big he is, how great he is. Maybe we need to stop saying, yeah, but you don't know my situation. Oh, God knows. And he's a great God. He can handle it. There's no doubt he can handle it. Whatever we we're in, and God will help us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the word this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, speak to my heart. Help me to see how great you are, how wonderful, how marvelous, 
You are the great counselor and comforter. You can help. And I pray that if there's someone here that's kind of lost hope, that they would look into Isaiah and realize there is hope. Someone that's just lost strength and they're fainting, they would look at who you really are and gain strength from you. There might be someone that just has a difficult decision to make. They just don't know which way to turn, what to do, but they look to you for wisdom and understanding. Help us, Lord, to realize you are a great God, and we just need to trust you in the situation that we're in. We'll praise your name. Ask all this in in the name of Jesus. And with your eyes closed, you're bowing. Duke, just ask God to reveal himself to you. Just say to God, God, show me how great you are. We heard about it. I want to make it personal. I want to make it practical. I want to go from here today with this God that Isaiah talked about. I don't want to be discouraged. I want to lose hope. I, I want to go from here knowing this great God and making this God my God. I'll let Pastor Cullen close. As we have our heads bowed and eyes closed, and you know, it's so easy to take advantage of God instead of thinking of His greatness. We compare Him to ourselves. We need to realize, as uh, was explained to us from Scripture and from the Word, that how great and marvelous is our God and how wonderful. And you know, each and every one of our lives, we need Him. We need Him so, so very much. And it comes to when we surrender, when we yield to him, and we allow him to have his way in our heart and in our lives. And that takes a decision. That takes a, a understanding of a decision as to what your situation may be. It might be financial. It might be physical, emotional, spiritual. But we are all a needy people. And we come and humble ourselves before him. And he is able, he is able to meet every, every need and to give comfort to every heart, to give strength and encouragement. He's able, as we've learned, to guide and to give counsel. He is a friend who loves us and cares for us. He is our creator. He is our father. He is our God. If you've experienced the new birth and as a child of God, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful relationship we have. And as we live in this world, this is not our home. This is our testing ground. This is our proving ground to trust Him and to live by faith. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you in closing, asking that Thy Holy Spirit would now take the message this morning as we think of how great, how great You truly are, Lord, how humbled we should be. Help us, O oh Father, in Jesus' name, to look to Thee for strength and for guidance to meet the needs of our heart and lives. And Lord, as You meet ours, may we be used of You to reach the world for Christ. And we'll give You the praise and the honor and the glory for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And the people said, Amen and praise ye the Lord. Well, God bless you. Stand with us, would please. Brother Sam is going to come and lead us in a song, and then you'll be this Number 325, more like the master, will be singing the second verse and chorus. Number 325.